So welcome to this video on obtaining user, and this in this case integer, input. So we've been looking at the fact that what goes in comes out, and in any given program you have input, which is extremely important. Obviously if nothing goes in, what could possibly come out? It's very interesting to note that the earliest computers were actually used for maths. So this is a picture of Pascal's calculator in 1642, and on the right you have Charles Babbage's analytic and analytical engine. And these incredibly complex looking machines were simply used for calculations and maths, so working with numbers. In fact, if you actually look into the origin of the word computer, as you can see on the screen, a machine that carries out computations, and in fact people, a person, who carried out calculations or com computations were referred to as computers. This is an interesting little old piece of something that was found and it's the world, world's oldest analog computer, so, so to speak, or so they say. So getting user input, we've already looked at getting user input which is string which is text and numbers together, but what about just working with integers? And obviously we did look at float, which is a different type of a data type, which is real numbers, fractional numbers, but we're just going to look at integers. So how do you get the user to input some text? We looked at that, but how do you get them to get user input? Now if you look at these, if you break up the command, you'll see that you first put in the variable, you then write input, and then you say enter a value for x, or enter a value for age, or whatever your variable is. The default when this is written is it accepts whatever is written by the user as string. So you need to actually convert it in, into an integer for you to be able to work with it as an integer. And you do that by using the command int. So say you had your command input, enter a value for x, just before it, you would write int, open brackets, and don't forget to close the brackets so you'd end up having a double bracket there. Now, why do you need to convert to an integer? Well, if you didn't, as I'll show you in a minute, if you asked the user for two numbers, three and four, and you wanted to print the sum of the numbers, in other words, add the numbers together, it would give you 34 instead of seven. And that's because it's treating the input as a string. However, if you converted these numbers, the user input, to an integer, it would correctly work with them as integers and give you a 7. Sometimes you'd need to convert an integer into a string. So if you look at the following example here, it says print the value of x is plus x, and this would give you an error. That's because x is an integer, this is a string, and I'm trying to add an integer x to a string. So in this case, I would actually convert the x to a string, like so, by putting a little string, str, just before the x, and that would convert it to an, a string so that it could just be added to this sentence and it would work. So let's have a, a look at a little example. Um, if I wanted to ask the user for their age, I could say, what is your age? So remember, you always start with the variable, input, and then what is your age? Now this, whoops, at the moment is going to take get string input. So if I want to turn this input into an integer, I type in int, open brackets, don't forget to close the brackets. I can now work with this age. So for instance, I could write print age times 10. If I write 10, it will give me 100. So note that if I did not have this conversion, and I now typed in 10, it gives me a comp completely bizarre output in which it doesn't actually treat the input like an integer, but rather like a string. So this is key, and another example is x is equal to, say, 5, and if I try to say the value of x is plus 5, you'll notice it will not work. That's because, in this case, I need to convert 
the value of the variable x to a string in order to print it correctly. You should now be able to solve all the tasks. Do feel free to go back over the video and pause where necessary.